Hey guys, it's Jim Off. Today I want to talk about kind of where I came from in my journey to find the game and how I was kind of like brought up as a child and that kind of stuff. A lot of guys, a lot of guys have been messaging me and emailing me saying like, can you go over like how you were uh, prior to game and all this stuff? Like we want to be able to relate to you more, all this stuff. <clears throat> I've alluded to, alluded to it in various videos, but I'm going to spend some time on this video kind of showing you the place I came from. So as I said before, um, intelligence is mostly genetic and also like anxiety disorders and stuff like that are mostly genetic as well. So I just happened to uh, do well with the genetic lottery in terms of intelligence and I was able to kind of like, you know, crush it at school without having to, to work very hard. I was able to do two bachelor's degrees um, in college in philosophy and computer science uh, with a minor in cognitive science. I did a master's in something called human computer interaction and another master's in philosophy of cognitive science. But I also grew up, and I still currently have, general anxiety disorder, social anxiety disorder, and like some minor OCD, not like ritualistic OCD, but like looping thought patterns. So I think a lot of that contributes to my like hyperanalytical abilities. Um, let's see. But yeah, anxiety disorders are really just like a function of like a malfunctioning uh, amygdala fear circuit in your brain. So like the fight or flight response gets tripped off at a lot higher threshold for most normal people. For me, it's like a low threshold. So like my body is constantly like wanting to feel like anxious or panicked and shit like that. Um, so let's see. So I mean like the AA and stuff like that, like the fucking approach anxiety, like I feel that like more than you guys do. And I, you just have, like I've told you before, you just treat that like you're probably in your shoe, you ignore it. So let's see, prior to college, I didn't even kiss a girl until college. That's, that's not a lie. People are like, how can that be possible? I didn't lose my virginity until the end of my first year of college. That's completely true. Um, I had an opportunity to kiss a girl in high school. It was like my cousin's friend, like in the woods, like truth or dare or something. And I thought it was like immoral because her friend had a boyfriend or whatever. Um, but I was raised like very, very, very Catholic. I ended up re rejecting that. And now I'm an atheist. Uh, for a million reasons. I'll, I'll probably make a video on religion. It's like a very big interesting topic for me. It'll, it'll offend a lot of people, I'm sure, but I'd like to give some objective um, rational arguments, show you guys kind of where it came from and why it's why it's there and why I think it was all made up by men um, with very good arguments behind it. Um, yeah, so I was raised very, very Catholic. Like, to give you an idea like how sheltering and conservative my parents are, they both waited until marriage to have sex. So I was like, and I was the first child, so I was probably like the result of like a 30 second blaze of glory. Hooray. So I'm like avenging my father. Um, but no, I mean, they don't, you know, we weren't even allowed to watch like Simpsons or shit like that in high school because there was swearing, right? I was taking the bus to school, I was in violin, I was, this is high school, I was in um, math league, I was in chess club, I was taking all advanced placement classes. I was reading all kinds of books on artificial intelligence. I was day trading stocks in the library. I paid for a lot of my college by day trading stocks. Well, first of all, I was, I was working like a retail job that paid me like $9 an hour and I would read poker books and cognitive science books. I would just fly through all these books because I had, it was a lot of downtime that, that retail job. And then I took those poker skills and I would play in these like underground tournaments and shit like that with some like fucking shady characters um in the city where I grew up and I won a bunch of money with those and then I would take that money and I would day trade stocks like during school hours like on lunch breaks and shit like that um and I, I sat at lunch I sat with like two other guys and that's it we, no girls I I had like some <laughs> It's like crazy even looking back at this. I had like some platonic female friends and I was like hardcore friend zone. I didn't talk to random girls really. I didn't, I was like terrified. I was like super, about as shy as it, as it you can be. Probably a lot more shy than any of you guys have ever been. Um, so yeah, I never ended up, I never expected uh, to end up in this position. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, these, these two guys at lunch, we would just debate like philosophy and like science and like one of my biggest interests since high school has been the technological singularity. Um, it's basically the point where like there's most people think that technological progress increases at a linear rate, 
but it increases at a double exponential rate. So what that means is, like, in 10 degree, like we're at the point, it's all a smooth empirical double exponential curve, and we're at the point where it's about to start shooting vertical. You're starting to see in the last 100 years, like people think the last, like, 1900 to 2000, they think that 100 years of progress will be the same progress as 2000 to 2100, but it's really going to be 20,000 times greater. And I'll make a bunch of, I'll keep it in a separate section on my channel, I'll make a bunch of, um, like, I'm, I'm really interested in, like, artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, robotics, uh, genomics, life extension, radical life extension, disease prevention, um, utilizing supplements to eliminate disease, um, let's see, quantum physics, philosophy topics, like do we have a soul, is there free will, is there a real basis for ethics, does our vote matter, um, even, you know, even like conspiracies, uh, not actual conspiracies, but different takes on what happened that very well supported different takes on what happened in the Vegas shooting um, and 9-11 and Pearl Harbor and all, all this stuff's backed up completely with empirical evidence. Um, yeah, I'll have a separate area on my channel for that. But kind of like what changed is I got out of my fucking parents' house. Like that was like the big like conservative sheltering like oppression going on there. Um, I kind of like came into my own like when I got into college. Um, I started going naturally like more outgoing. I started cracking jokes a lot. I started making friends, like more friends. I was I was part of this like little nerdy circle before. Um, yeah, I mean, but going into my third year of college, I only been with three chicks. Like, had sex with three chicks. I had a late kind of three. <laughs> Wait, how old was I? I was about I was about twenty. Yeah. So at age twenty, I had a, a late kind of three. So a lot of you, a lot of you guys watching this, you're like, oh, how am I ever gonna get to like 800? It's possible. Like, I didn't get into game until I was 27, 26, 27, and now I'm 34. And at that time, I had a late count of like 64. A lot of you guys are like, oh, you're a natural. Not really. I was going out to fucking um, parties all the time. I was going out to bars all the time. And alcohol, for better or worse, kind of alleviated a lot of that social anxiety for me. Like, a few drinks would suddenly, like, calm all that, like, hyperactive anxiety shit, and then I, would able to, I was able to just, like, flow. So that was, you know, that, it's not sustainable to be drinking that often. Like, I was drinking, like, every time I was doing game for, like, the past 10 years or more. I mean, like, unofficial game before I got into official game. Um... Yeah, I mean, I got like 60 chicks. I mean, the quality wasn't the best. Like, I think a lot of people's early on bangs, like, you know, you're bringing a bunch of sixes, a bunch of sevens. There'll be, a, there'll be occasional hot ones thrown in. Like, fast forward a little bit to the count, and like, past like 100, past like 150, like, the quality's been very, very strong all the way throughout. Um, like, I won't even, like, go out with a chick under like a 7.5 anymore, usually. Um, so I don't want to make this like too long, I go on and on and on. But basically like, um, I came from a much shyer place than you guys did, from a much more awkward place. I didn't kiss a girl until I was 18. I didn't lose my virginity until the end of first year of college. And things worked out fine. Like, it's not too late to fucking turn this shit around. Um, I'm going to teach you like the mindsets you need, the tactics you need, all that stuff, so you can kind of like shortcut past all the shit that I had to learn. Um, a lot of you know I started with Mystery Method. When I first got in the game, I started with Mystery Method. I broke 100 lay count with Mystery Method. So I went from like 64 to 100 with just Mystery Method. And I still use a lot of Mystery Method to this day. I will make a video showing what I think are the good parts, one of the bad parts of Mystery Method. But without going on and on too much more, um, I mean, I, w I was like one of the least popular and, and most shy kids in my whole school out of like 700 kids in my graduating class. Um, and now I, I run circles around all those natural guys. I talked about another video, how like the star point guard from our high school basketball team, I ran into him in Vegas, and like he lost his fame after he left high school, and you know, he's not like the superstar he once used to be with the chicks because he doesn't have that fame anymore. So I might make a part two to this, but I think that's enough for now. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the next video.